came directly from an a certificate application which means that it can get revoked in order to get the application working once it's installed onto your device you will first have an error where when you first load it it will say untrusted enterprise error like that in order to fix that issue go to settings then general scroll down to profile and device management you will then need to find the certificate it's signed to uh, currently it's Moby social that could change in the future Press the blue trust button, then the red trust words, and that should allow you into the application just like that. Once logged into the application, the first thing you need to do is create an account. Now you can go through a longer process of setting up a password and connecting it to an email, but to do live streaming it's relatively simple. And once you've got past these couple of screens, you can get to the live streaming area, which is go live now. And there are several options here, including Twitch and Facebook live streaming, but we're going to do YouTube in this example. You don't have to necessarily choose a game, you can leave that blank since you are broadcasting to YouTube. Orientation, you need to set that before the recording, so make sure it's in the right orientation. Quality goes to 720p, so put it as high as you think your connection can handle. And I'm going to put it up to 720p and we'll see what the final result is like. Microphone recording is offered here so you can turn that on and give permission to your microphone as you do that. And live message notification, we'll have a look at that in a little while. It does warn you though that it may affect your performance with messages showing. So if you press next, what you're going to have to do now is actually sign into your YouTube account in order to give... Omla RK permission to access your YouTube account to do the live streaming. Once you have given permission, you should have this go live button on screen. Tap it, and that will bring up another pop up which allows you to put in a video title as well as a description. Once you've got your title and description sorted, simply press the start streaming button on your iOS device. There should be a blue bar that appears at the top of the screen and it'll jump to a new screen on your iOS device. And then if you are connected to YouTube on the live streaming page on a desktop computer, if you refresh a browser, you should start to see your stream appearing on screen. And so on my desktop computer now, you can now see the live stream as it would be appearing to any viewers who are watching it. And the delay here is around about 20 to 30 seconds between what I'm actually doing on screen and what people will see on YouTube. The stream performance can be very sketchy as well. When I was testing here, the first test I did off camera worked perfectly. And then the second test, there was a lot of loading, as you can see now on the left hand side of the screen. And it took a very long time to get it to a decent resolution of either 480 or 720p. I couldn't quite tell from the screen output on my desktop computer. I've jumped two minutes into the live stream now and you can see the lag. I'm down to a minute on my Clash Royale game on actually playing it and on the live stream I still have a minute 50 so we're around about a minute behind in terms of lag but the quality has improved on the live stream and it's the best you're going to get from this test. So from a technical perspective if you want to live stream for free directly from an iPhone or an iPad to YouTube, Twitch, Facebook it can be done through Omelette Arcade Pro. 
I'm going to say technically because it leaves a lot to be desired. So let's go through those problems. Now, first of all, can you hear anything from a live stream? The answer is no, because the volume output on the live stream is very, very low, at least on my iPad Mini 4 as I was testing it. And I could barely hear my voice and I had to put the volume full level on my iPad, which meant that it completely drowned out anything from a live stream. So that was a huge problem. Absolutely no sound almost from the live stream. Now the next problem revolves around the very definition of what live streaming is. When you live stream to an audience, it's supposed to be interactive. You're broadcasting with the idea that you can react to commenters, respond to questions, and make it a interactive experience. And so far on iOS, no form of live streaming has been able to do this when you're recording your screen. Let's have a look at the evidence. Now if we look at 